Shabbat Shalom, good evening. Thank you to those with us here in our sanctuary and to those watching online from afar. If, however, you are in New York City, north of 42nd Street and south of 96th Street, and you are otherwise well and not caring for someone who needs you, I invite you to turn off your television set or shut down your computers and join us in person on the corner of 65th Street and 5th Avenue. We will be here for the next hour and a half. And while we are always grateful to have you with us in spirit, right now we need your physical presence too. Israel is under attack from Hamas, Islamic Jihad, and Hezbollah rockets and it is under vicious rhetorical assault in the wider Arab world, but also from those around the globe who do not understand or refuse to accept the desperation of Israel's plight and its need to keep its people safe. And not only is Israel under siege, so is the global Jewish community. In Berlin, a synagogue was firebombed. At Columbia University, an Israeli student was beaten. In a midtown subway station, a Jewish woman was punched in the face. Everywhere, Jews are suffering intimidation. Taunts of kill the Jews, death to Israel in London, threats against a synagogue in Charlotte, swastikas in a school in Chappaqua, and at our city's famed Second Avenue Deli. I understand that many may be fearful of attending synagogue right now, Last week's announcement of a global day of jihad was frightening. The FBI's warning of an increase in menacing rhetoric against the Jewish community was alarming. But if hundreds of thousands of Israelis can put themselves in harm's way to defend the Jewish people, the least the rest of us can do is come to temple to pray for them. And this invitation is not just to Jews, but to all who care about Jews and the state of Israel. As this war drags on, the pressure on Israel to stand down will only increase, and the Jewish community cannot shoulder by itself the responsibility of insisting on Israel's right to security. All of us are deeply distressed by the humanitarian disaster unfolding in Gaza and the deaths of thousands of innocent Palestinians. They also are the victims of Hamas's cruelty. If Hamas laid down its weapons and marched out of Gaza tomorrow, Israel would cease its bombing tomorrow. Barring such surrender, Israel must take those steps necessary to rescue the rest of the hostages, thank God two are safe, and defend its people while doing everything in its power to protect innocents caught in the crossfire, including ensuring access to humanitarian aid. And so I would add, must we protect those caught in the crossfire in this country? One week ago, a six-year-old Palestinian-American boy was stabbed to death in Chicago and his mother seriously wounded. Just two days earlier, I had shared with many my concern that Islamophobia sparked by Hamas would cause Americans who are already afraid to look at their Muslim neighbors with suspicion. We cannot allow that to happen. Today, Israel finds itself in a profoundly difficult position, and the Jewish community needs leaders of the non-Jewish community to acknowledge that. President Biden has stepped to the fore along with other politicians, New York's Mayor Eric Adams and Governor Kathy Hochul among them. But we are well aware of the failure of other influential figures, moral leaders in the academic world, for example, who have refused or been slow to distinguish between Hamas's acts of brutality and Israel's acts of self-defense. One source of enormous encouragement for me has been my partners in the faith community. 
No sooner had word of Hamas's war on Israel been broadcast than I began to receive messages from colleagues decrying the attacks, extending their prayers, and offering whatever assistance they could. New York's Cardinal Timothy Dolan published a powerful statement declaring, to have one's home attacked is a sacrilege, to defend one's home is righteous. And then the archdiocese made a significant financial contribution to UJA Federation's Israel Emergency Fund. Other clergy, too, have attended services, rallies, and vigils, articulating with moral clarity the distinction between aggressor and victim, including at our own vigil and rally the Monday after Hamas's invasion and rampage, which murdered more than 1,400 Israelis, wounded 4,200, and captured 200. One of those present was Father Ryan Muldoon, the new director of the Office of Ecumenical and Interreligious Affairs in the Archdiocese of New York. He also serves as adjunct professor of ecumenism and interreligious dialogue at St. Joseph's Seminary in Yonkers, and as parochial vicar of St. Patrick's Cathedral in the city. In 2020, Father Muldoon earned his licentiate in sacred theology from the Pontifical University of St. Thomas Aquinas in Rome. Pastor Jared Stoller is the senior pastor of St. Peter's Evangelical Lutheran Church on Lexington Avenue. Pastor Stoller holds a Master of Divinity degree and a diploma in Lutheran studies from Yale University, as well as a degree in organ performance from the Oberlin Conservatory of Music. He is a leader in numerous church-related organizations and currently serves as co-chair of a partnership of faith in New York City. Reverend Dr. Eric Park is the senior minister of Christ Church United Methodist on Park Avenue. He graduated with a Bachelor of Arts degree in English from Dickinson College in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, a Master of Divinity degree from Duke University in Durham, and a Doctor of Ministry degree from Drew Theological School in Madison, New Jersey. Reverend Park is an elder in the United Methodist Church. Earlier this week, I reached out to these religious leaders to let them know how meaningful their presence and their words would be for us tonight. I think they could hear the pain I was feeling, that we are feeling. Absolutely, they each responded. Tell me when and where and I'll be there. These are my friends and I am so grateful for their being here. So please welcome first Father Muldoon then Pastor Stoller, and then Dr. Park. 